Why are camera lenses so expensive? So, let's say you just got a camera, and you think you are done with the expensive part. And as soon as you think of getting a lens, you get disappointed. You get disappointed at their painful price, and that's it. When you think of it, even an old lens that is under-featured costs at least 150 bucks. So imagine buying the wrong lens. It sure makes a hole in your pocket. I bet by now you are wondering why lenses are so expensive. So without wasting time further, let's look at why most lenses are so pricey. What is a lens? Before we jump into the expensive price tag, let's figure out what a lens is in short words. A lens is a piece of glass or optic that focuses light rays from an object to generate an image of that item. I'm meters quite aware that it's a little difficult to understand, but in a way the complex nature of the lens reasons for the expensive price tag. How does the lens work? In a figurative way, a lens is what the eye pupil is to humans. Lenses can be concave or convex, and the images formed by a lens are determined by its shape. Let's get back to the main issue, now that I've given you a general knowledge of lenses. Why are lenses so expensive? Below, I will introduce you to the three main things that lead to the high price tag of lenses. Lens construction. It indeed looks like a simple and small tool, but there is much more to a lens design. It is a light controlling device, as I previously stated. It accomplishes this by bending and filtering light through a variety of components within the lens body. These elements shape, thickness, clarity, curvature and position must be done in a very accurate way. Outside, the construction must be well built and durable. Furthermore, there is also the weather sealing feature, which is self-explanatory. There's also the importance of the lightweight and compact form factor. When you think about it, it's difficult to cram all of those components into a little device and keep it lightweight and compact. A lens design is certainly more difficult than it appears, hence the cost. Lens materials. While the construction was a sophisticated process, the raw materials that are used on a lens don't come cheap either. Reflection within the lens causes problems like image duplication and the transmission of non-image light to the image. This is known as ghosts and flares. So, Lens manufacturers use lens coatings to produce optics that can render an image with the least unwanted optical degradation. This process is extremely complex and costly. Lens labor. Once you got all the materials and the blueprint someone has to build it right. Of course, but a machine can't do it, and which is why skilled craftspeople are required, and not just a few of them, a tad more than what you might think. All of this, without a question, raises the cost of production. Focal length. The focal range is one of the main factors when it comes to lenses, and it's the one that you should highly consider when it comes to picking the right lens for your type of photography. The focal length is the distance traveled by light from the optical center of the lens to the camera sensor. It is usually displayed on the lens barrel and is measured in millimeters moreover. The lenses themselves are named after the focal range they carry. A shorter focal length results in a more zoomed out image, whilst a longer focal length results in a more zoomed in image. While the focal length will not strikingly determine the price of the lens, on some occasions it does. Telephoto lenses tend to cost more than the usual ones. Oh, I sure do have the perfect example for that, Sigma 200-500mm f 2.8. If you think that your $300 lens was expensive, think again. Although it is a really capable lens, I don't know what is going through Sigma's mind with that price tag. Aperture. Another key factor to consider is the aperture, which is almost as important as the focal length when it comes to lens selection. Aperture is also known as f-stop since it is measured in f-slash-stops and is represented by the digits 1.4, 2, 2.8, 4, 5.6, 8, 11, and 16. The aperture will be listed on the lens name and, most likely, on the barrel, exactly like the focal length. The aperture controls the volume of light that enters the camera. Reduce or increase the aperture size to enable more or less light to reach your camera sensor. The F number determines how much light enters the camera. The lower the F number, the more light enters the camera. Built-in image stabilization. Most modern cameras, especially the latest flagships, have built-in image stabilization. Basically, it refers to how stable a camera's optical system is throughout shooting. The good news is that if your camera doesn't have built-in stabilization, your lens might. However, it will also have a higher price. Different lens manufacturers use different stabilizing technologies, but they all have the same purpose, 
to make the pictures look sharp with no shake. If you have a flagship camera that has its own stabilization, and your lens has one as well, the amount of unshaken content you will get is incredible. Bokeh Effect Bokeh is defined as the effect of a soft out-of-focus background that you get while shooting a subject, simply said, bokeh is the pleasing or aesthetic quality of the out-of-focus blur in a photo. What makes this section so essential is that not all lenses have the same bokeh effect, and they differ in price as well. Bokeh is made by turning small spots of light into soft circles while using a wide aperture to render a busy background into a gentle expanse of colors.